food. Everybody loves food. Every day, all around the world, we cook, we order, we eat, we snap, we post, and we blog about our food. It's essential to life, and more than that, it's enjoyable. And it's not just humans. Animals love their food, too. Here at the Brandywine Zoo and elsewhere, humans and animals savor their daily meals. But where does all that food come from? And what harm is it doing to the planet when we grow an avocado in California and eat it in Florida? or catch a lobster in Maine and eat it in Arizona. Producing enough food for all the people on the planet is a huge strain to the world's environments. Food production accounts for over one quarter of greenhouse gas emissions. Half of the world's habitable land is used for agriculture, and 78% of water pollution is caused by agriculture. But what do these numbers actually mean? It means that animal habitats are lost to make way for crops. Our planet is being warmed partly by producing food and transporting it long distances. And our focus on monoculture, growing only one crop at a time on the land, means we need to spray lots of chemicals. We use energy to get our food to where it's going. So shopping local, at farmer's markets for instance, does help make our food more sustainable. But it's much more important to think about what we eat rather than where it comes from. Beef and lamb production has an extremely negative impact on the environment, producing a lot of carbon emissions. On the other end, poultry, corn, and eggs have a much lower impact. Meat is almost always the less sustainable option. But remember, it's all about everyone doing better. We don't have to all be vegetarian, but reducing our consumption of meat could have huge positive effects. In the Western world, our agriculture is very focused on a system called monocropping. In this system, we plant a single crop on a patch of land year after year. This is not a natural way for plants to grow, and the result is that the soil becomes weaker and weaker. Farmers must then rely on chemical fertilizers and pesticides to continue growing. Monoculture is popular because it's the most profitable system. But those chemicals make their way into groundwater and run off into streams and eventually the ocean, causing pollution issues. But we've recently come to realize that insecticides are having an even more serious impact. They are killing bees. Every summer at the Brandywine Zoo, we provide a home for a colony of honeybees. They build their hive here for us to watch and learn about. This humble bug is one of the most important animals on the planet. A staggering one out of every three bites of food we take is possible because of bees. They pollinate our crops so they can grow. This little bug contributes $24 billion to our economy every year through their services. But worldwide, bees are dying. The insecticides we use to maintain our monoculture crops are killing them. Here in New England, fishing is an industry and a pastime. But overfishing is a global problem. All over the world, fish are pulled from the seas in staggering numbers, leading to the collapse of ocean ecosystems. Fishing also leads to bycatch, when animals are unintentionally trapped in nets. This is a huge cause of death for sea turtles, dolphins, and many other animals. Another unsustainable fishing practice is shark finning. Every year, 73 million sharks are captured, have their fins cut off, and then are thrown back into the sea to die. This practice is all for the sake of making shark fin soup, a delicacy in some parts of the world. This practice drives home the fact that some specific food items are particularly unsustainable. But what can we do? We have to eat. Luckily, we have the power to choose what we eat and where we eat. And eating sustainably doesn't have to mean eating expensive. One of the best ways to eat sustainably and save money is to try growing your own food. Even if you just grow one plant in your window seal, you've just made your diet more sustainable. Here at the Brandywine Zoo, we use the eggs our hens lay to feed other animals, reducing the need to buy factory farmed eggs and saving us a few bucks in the process. And that's just the beginning. Buying from non-monoculture farms and avoiding particularly harmful foods altogether are a huge help. Now it's your turn. Using the materials I provided, learn more about sustainable food systems and think critically about how you would help solve this environmental problem.